Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. What we're gonna be doing is taking a look at Microsoft Power Toys. It seems about every other day it is on the daily trending list here on GitHub. And I've never actually taken a look at it on this channel, so that is what we're gonna to do today. So first of all, we're in the wrong operating system. Let's go ahead and open up our Microsoft Remote Desktop here and dive on into our virtual machine. There we go. All right, 77,000 stars they released just two days ago. And just in this recent release, it looks like they added a bunch of new utilities too, which might have been why it was uh, trending here. Dang, it is 125 megabytes. It's pretty large. Whoa, that was quick. Did you see that? That was like two seconds. I downloaded things quicker than my NAS can transfer things sometimes. Power Toys, Preview, x84. Do we agree to this license? I think we might. Okay and the installation was successful. Your computer needs to restart. Oh no. Oh wait. <laughs> uh, your computer and it's there. Should we restart anyway? This is a virtual machine. We might as well. Let's restart. So here is the power toy settings. So right away, some basic stuff here, some general information app theme. looks like we could change this so you can set if you want this light or dark. I'm going to keep it as dark for the duration of this video. First things first, always on top. I was kind of uh, not testing it necessarily, but looking at some of the options. And this thing seems pretty cool. For example, if we open up the trusty calculator. Let's slide this over here. And let's say we're doing stuff. We're doing stuff in Excel and it is going behind. We want to keep this on top. So now calculator is going to be always on top. Now that border kind of looks like garbage. So you can change it. So if I go like that, you can see that the border thickness is gonna go down substantially all the way up to zero, but maybe just like two or three pixels would look good. And let's disable round corners. There we go. I, I'm liking that a little bit better. And of course we can add excluded apps and there's some more options. Uh, moving down, we have a wake. So if we go here and check this right over there, now the screen will always turn on and it should ignore our uh, power plant. Now, color picker, this one's cool. Usually in like a GNOME, which is my desktop of choice, there's a, a tool that I use that's integrated into the shell to do this, but a, a little hotkey is perfectly fine. So if I do Windows key, or in this case, Command, Shift, and C, it will open up our color picker. So if I wanted to know what this blue is right here, you just give that a click. And there we go. And it kind of gives us a range too, which is really nice. So if I went and I selected a specific color in this range, we have our hex code, RGB, and others, and then we could give that a copy if we'd like to. And while this is open, we could do it again with that button there and select something else such as this like yellowy color for the Explorer. And you can see we have a history there of everything else we selected. And of course, there are settings. So we can change things. So the default, so what shows up when we first open it up is here. So if you do prefer uh, RGB, for example, we could select that. And then if I did it again, you could see the default now is RGB, but we could of course still get our hex values and whatever else it may be when we actually pick our color. And the editor is what we just had open, so if we wanted to show more things within that, we could select those here. Personally, the only ones I kind of care about, hex is the most important, RGB is useful too, just these first two are what I go with. Fancy zones, this one's a little more complicated. This is a quicker video, so I'm probably not gonna be able to dive into this to the fullest extent, but just let's see the activation shortcut, let's do it. Windows key, shift, and whatever that is. And it's not wanting to cooperate, so we are gonna change this real quick. So maybe Windows key, shift, and forward slash. And now let's do that again. So there we go. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this calculator. So it looks like we can create custom grids and layouts with this, which is very nice. Basically an advanced feature of, let's see if it'll show up. Usually when you like right click this, it gives you a couple uh, tiling options. But let's say we wanted columns. We could select that, we go to priority grid grid or of course we could create our very own layouts and you could do overlaps grid i'm just going to go with custom layout one hit create and then we could get real snazzy with how this works so if we added something there so if there's a certain workflow so for example if you wanted like an excel thing here uh let's say tweet deck right here email client and then like music you could do that theoretically save and then we have our custom layout right there but from there i'm not going to dive into the uh, full depth of everything that this could do that's definitely one of the selling points of this next up is file explorer lots of warning messages here most of this is just making a better previews which is always appreciated you have previews for pdfs svgs markdown documents 
just kind of less common files that you probably need to enable through here. Uh, image resizer is a pretty cool utility. So do I even have an image on here? Snipping tool. If we just drop that new snip on our desktop here, and then if we go ahead and right click on this, and from there we want to go ahead and show some more options, then we could go ahead and resize pictures. So if we were to select that, it would go through some of the options that we have. So we have small, medium, large. This is a 1440p picture. So if I wanted it to be significantly smaller, I'd select that. I have some more options, resize, and then there we go. We have a smaller version. If I hover over this, you can see that's the 1440p. If I hover over the new one, it's uh, 553 by 480. And then of course, like everything else, you have additional settings on configuring exactly how you want this to work. Now I'm not gonna dive into everything here. We have keyboard manager. So you could do some uh, key or shortcut remapping here. We have mouse utilities. So one of these is find my mouse activation method is left control twice. So if I go uh, control, control, there's my mouse. It's kind of similar. If I go ahead and swipe away over here, we're now magically in Mac OS. If I give this a little shimmy shake, that's when that's a Mac OS feature. So it's kind of similar to that, but a little different. And there you go. A little more uh, apparent and kind of, actually kind of easier to do. Appearance and behavior. So you could change all that if you want to. You have excluded apps and of course more settings, including mouse highlighter. So uh, Windows key shift H, command shift H. Oh, it will highlight clicks. There it is. That's kind of weird. That gives me like um, 2008 Cam Studio vibes. I'm gonna keep that enabled just cause it feels a little retro. And you have other stuff, mouse crosshairs, so on and so forth. Power rename. A window shelf or bulk renaming using search or replace and regular expressions. So it will rename things similar to the uh, find and replace that you might see in like uh, Microsoft Word. If that is a function you're interested in, honestly, at the moment, I am not. So Power Toys Run. This is a quick launcher with additional compata or capabilities without sacrificing performance. Alt. Oh, this is a Mac keyboard. Where's Alt? So Shift Space. Let's make that the new one. So if I go shift space, there we go. It's basically you launcher. So if I want to open up edge, I would do that. I could open up websites directly from it. So if we go to techhunt.tv, there we go to the best website that exists for Tech Hut Media. If I did something like two plus two is equal to four, and we could actually open that up in the calculator. So like I said, basically everything that you launcher can do, but it's cool, it's just, uh, easily available in Windows. And then like, again, everything else, you have a wide variety of settings, including the option to pick where it shows up, a specific theme so I can uh, make it, oh, we want dark. There we go. Now that's a little better. And it's kind of cool too. You could see I have a Tech Hut OneDrive here, a Tech Hut Media Folder, which is another OneDrive thing. I usually use my Synology, but it's cool that that's pulling. Now I'm not in Windows that much, but now that it's here, I'm probably gonna be taking advantage of that while I'm actually in this virtual machine. Quick access. This will make it so if like you're trying to type Spanish, you need to add the little uh, squiggly bits on top of, or accents on top of letters, you could do that. So hold O, side, and then up here, while I'm holding O, I can select which one I was specifically looking for. Just like that, pretty cool. Screen ruler. The real question is how big is this window right here? Well, let's find out by Windows key shift M and looks like we could do a whole boundary select spacing and then line. So let's say I wanted this, get a rough estimate or rough size of how big this window is. And it looks like we seem to be rocking at about almost 15 and slightly above a thousand pixels. Super cool. And then you have settings, tolerance, line color, whatever it may be. Shortcut guide. Ooh, this is nice. So Windows key, shift, and forward slash will bring up all the various shortcuts that we could do. Window control. So oh, I didn't even know some of this. Very handy. I like this. So if I escape out of there, I've been using Windows wrong this whole time. That's nice. Bet you it looks real good in dark mode. Oh yeah, that's nice. Okay. Definitely handy. Text extractor, I think this is a newer one. This is something I'm interested in. So like I can't select this right here uh, and let's see if we can extract text from it. So Windows key shift T for the text extractor. 
and we want the description of text extractor to be extracted with text extractor. Where'd it go? Did it copy? So yeah, it just copied it like I selected it. That's nice. Let's see if it does this whole thing right here. So da -da -da, shift T and then we will grab that, throw open our trusty text editor and there we go, it works. That, that, that is definitely a handy feature. It's kind of like uh, um, iOS, iPhones and all that have a feature now where if you take a picture, you can select text just like it's uh, there to select. It's super cool, especially for like school and stuff. Video conference mute. Global mute for both your microphone and webcam disabling this module. So just some extra hotkeys and shortcuts. I see a use for this, but there's also other ways to do this. So out of all this, the things that are definitely super awesome, uh, the text extractor we just looked at, I do love the shortcut guide, honestly. I don't use hotkeys and shortcuts enough, especially on Mac OS. Like you need them to use Mac OS efficiently and I just don't do it. Same thing with Gnome over there. If I would actually do that, I'd be a lot more efficient. Always on top, I can see the use case for that, but I would barely ever use it. Color picker is helpful. Fancy zones is super cool. Need to dive more into that and actually learn how to use it properly. But of that, Power Toys Run, obviously, that's probably the one I'm actually going to use most frequently. Um, yeah, I do hope you enjoyed that. Just a little uh, overview of the options and potential that this tool currently offers. I always, like I said in the beginning, I always see it trending. So I had to give it a look and check it out because I'm always checking out GitHub to find uh, projects to do videos or highlights on like this. And Power Toys always seems to be taking one of the top spots. So there you go. Oh, there it is. That's what I was talking about earlier. So you can snap that on over there and life is good. With that, uh, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, comment, rate, subscribe, all that fun stuff. If you absolutely hated this video, be sure to dislike it and tell me why in the comments. I already know based on a lot of the people who watch these videos, it's going to be the simple fact how dare I use this proprietary garbage? Am I a shill? Sometimes I ask myself the same. Bye. <laughs>